here now to assess all the ongoing chaos going on at home and abroad is legendary TV anchor and author of Killing the Witches, author of so many books, so many books, and maybe he'll even break some news on another book tonight. Bill O'Reilly, good to have you on, my friend. Good to welcome you back. Bill, uh, I, I guess there's so much to cover. I, let's start with last night. New York, uh, New York, I believe it was New York 3 or 10, I can't remember what district it was, lost that Santos seat. And the reason why I'm asking bringing this up is I talked a little bit last night about how the GOP will take the moral victory and the political loss, a la get rid of Santos, lose the seat, whereas the Democrats will circle the wagons and take the political win and screw the, the moral victory. Your thoughts on the difference between why the GOP is so weak when it comes to protecting their own? Well, the Republicans did the right thing. I mean, Santos is a grifter, and he got the uh, seat uh, in a fraudulent way. Menendez, the senator from New Jersey, is still in the Senate, but some of his colleagues of, on the Democratic side want him to quit. But the Democratic Party is much more um, compact and uh, together than the Republican Party is, and that's because of fear. So Nancy Pelosi, as Speaker of the House, made it quite clear that if you were to dissent on anything and you were a member of Congress elected on the Democratic side, she would cut off all your money uh, and you would not be able to have funding from the Democratic machine for your reelection. And that holds today. So any Democrat in the House of Representatives that goes against what the speaker or the minority leader wants is done. OK, that's why Swazi, who's not an open border guy, and I had him on my program, the No Spin News, and I said, look, you may be a moderate Democrat, but you're not going to go up against the progressive left. You're not going to go up against Biden. And you know you're not going to get up, go up against them. And he didn't deny it because he won the seat here where I am in the third district in New York because the Democratic National Committee pumped about $15 million into his campaign. Mm. And it overwhelmed the Republic, uh, Republican candidate. So that's why. Now, the Republicans don't do that. They don't have any leader. Mitch McConnell is way past his prime, uh, not well respected anymore. And the new Speaker of the House, Johnson, doesn't have the clout. So that's why Republicans are all over the place. And there is a far right component that doesn't cooperate with what the mainstream Republicans want. So, you know, I don't know if I call you an old school kind of guy, old school Republicans, you know, a traditional Republican, maybe I would, conservative. But I'm not a Republican bowling. I'm an independent. I've never been a party okay. apparatchik. Okay. I don't believe in the party system. I think they're all pinheads. I would agree with you, completely agree with you. However, if you were to lean in a certain direction, I think you would lean towards the eh, more traditional conservative voice, I would guess. And correct me if I'm wrong. Here's my question. Ninety five billion dollars gets passed in the Senate overnight. They throw it over the House. The House says no way. What does Bill O'Reilly think of that process? And what, what should we be doing? You're this talking about without... Ukraine now, right? Well, I'm talking about 90. Yeah, about 60 Ukraine for Ukraine, and, and 14 for Israel, a couple five billion right. for uh, Hamas right. supporting Gaza residents and but nothing for the border. Senate says a OK. Mitch McConnell puts his check mark on it. Twenty two 22 Republican senators vote for it, and the House says, get out of here. We're not passing that. We're not even talking about that. Right. Well, look, I want every politician to vote his or her conscience. I'm not uh, somebody who says you got to go along the party line. I think that Ukraine is blocking Putin from creating world disorder. That's what they're doing. So I'm a historian. I know what Hitler did in the 30s. I know that Putin has modeled himself on old Adolf. He wants to reconstitute the Soviet Union. He's already got Belarus. He's already got Georgia. He wants Ukraine. And then he'll start in the east. And this guy's not going to stop. He's going to create disorder in the world. If Putin wins in Ukraine, wins means he controls the country, then China's going to go into Taiwan. The mullahs in Iran are going to do far worse than they're doing now. And the nut in North Korea is going to saber rattle in South Korea. It's going to happen. So the people who object to sending U.S. money in the form of weapons to Ukraine are basically short-sighted, in my opinion, my humble opinion. They don't understand 
the villainy of Vladimir Putin and what he really wants. So I would vote for the aid. That being said, I don't think I, it can't be open ended. All right. You got to get a, a system in place where Ukraine has got to be able to dig in and defend itself without these massive subsidies. But right now, I don't think the border should be tied into that bill, by the way. I think the House should come up with its own border bill. Just come up with your own border bill. Let's which, take a look get, at it. I would not killed, have voted for Which will get killed on the Senate. My question with you, let's go back to this. So, well, 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 maybe well, not, though. There's a reconciliation process. The Senate has its own bill. I would not have voted for that bill because it doesn't solve the problem. It still allows two million people in here unsupervised. Yeah. It's got to stop. Yeah, a okay? year. So I, I'm a, a year on that. Two million a year. Well, yeah. So what's the number? Where, you know, you know, Russia is a big country, Bill. They got a lot of assets. They got oil assets. They've got they've got a lot of uh, military assets. Ukraine, not so much. Is there a number that Bill O'Reilly would say enough is enough? Two hundred billion, a trillion? No, when do you stop? Not at this point. In, not at this point in history. If you surrender to Putin and Putin controls Ukraine, the world would devolve into disorder. That will happen. So is there a number, so, Bill? Is it, is it a trillion? I don't, I don't is it understand. five trillion? Well, I mean, well, at some point you got to say it's not going to happen, right? I mean, all right. At some point, maybe that's true. We're not there now. And if you understand history at all, in 1937, 50 percent of the American population had no beef with Hitler. They didn't want to get involved. We're talking about Joseph Kennedy, Charles Lindbergh, big boys. Now nah, leave him alone. Let him do what he wants to do. All right. And Putin knows that. Now, here's the caveat on this. If Trump is reelected, I think Trump could solve that UK problem. I think Putin will go, all right, I'm going to take the best deal I can get because I know this guy is not going to let me overrun Ukraine, whereas Biden's so weak that Putin's just sitting it out right well, now. Well, well, maybe that, that has something to do with this next soundbite. We're all that soundbite with, uh, of Putin. Biden or Trump? Biden. He's a man who's more experienced, he's prognosable, he's a politician of old forms. But we will work with anyone лидером США, которому окажет доверие американский народ. So Putin says, uh, Putin, his question was Putin or Biden. He said Biden. He's more experienced and he says more, more predictable. Yeah, what do I care what Putin says? He's never told the truth in his life. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who Putin wants. I don't care who Putin wants. He's a liar. He's a manipulator. Um, whatever game he's playing, I don't want to play. I just want to stop the man. I want to hurt the man as much as possible. And believe me, he's being hurt by this Ukraine thing. I mean, talk about open-ended. I mean, you got hundreds of thousands of casualties on the Russian side. And, you know, how long are the Russian people going to put up with this guy? I don't know. But he's not skating right now. All right. One quick thought on the Her report. And so there's a big hubbub about, you know, the, the, the special counsel says, you know, he's just a he's an old man. His memory is failing. So we're not going to prosecute. And then Biden tries to come out and say, wait a minute, I'm not so old. Watch this. And then, you know, fumbles all over himself. And then the cleanup, the cleanup is the worst part where they send that knucklehead from the general counsel's office to clean up. It got worse. And then he's talking heads. So, no, no, he's great. He's in perfect shape. And we know differently. What should Democrats do? Look, at this point, they don't have a plan B. It doesn't look like Michelle Obama has any interest in this. If she did, she would be the nominee. But from what I'm getting, there's no nothing coming out of the uh, Obama four mansions that would indicate that this woman wants to run for president. They got nowhere else to go. Not yet. The Not progressive yet. left. Not yet. The progressive no. left. Not yet. You know, what? she she might want to wait to be asked nicely yeah, and then yeah, asked she again. Might. Well, you know, might is a word that news people shouldn't use. So I'm just saying at this point, there's no indication. The Democrats are in a very tough spot. But here's something that everybody has to understand. The progressive left that runs the Democratic Party wants Biden. They love Biden because Biden does every single thing mm. they want. Mm. They don't care if he's incapacitated. They don't care if he doesn't get out of bed. As long as he rubber stamps the progressive agenda, which he does 
100% of the time, they're happy with him. Yeah. And that works to Biden's God favor. I love him. Good luck. We, we wish, as, as they used to say at Fox, we wish him well, as they showed you the door over there. Uh, Bill, how's Holly? I know she was having uh, some, uh, she yeah, had some Holly's, surgery. Yeah, uh, Holly's, you know, we're working on saving Holly. You know, uh, she's only seven years old. Um, she had a brain tumor. And the rehab on that, the comeback on that is not easy. So we're doing everything we can. Holly is a very special dog. Three million Twitter followers, Holly has. And, um, you know, look, <laughs> she's part of the O'Reilly family. Oh, yeah. Anybody in my family is under my protection. Um, we don't, we're 100 percent on that. So Holly's getting the best care in the world. And we're hoping that she will recover and recover in a strong way. We are. Thanks we for all asking, are. Oh, we're, we are all dog Thank lovers you. here, Bill. And we pray for Holly uh, and think best thoughts. Real right. quick, the book. Just tell us the status of the book and the book coming up, I believe. Just finished it. Confronting the president's no spin and now assessments of uh, from Washington to Biden. Just finished it. Uh, now I'm editing it. Um, this is going to be my biggest book. And uh, it is something. So every page you're going to learn something you don't know about whether or not the individual presidents, all 45 of them, have hurt or helped the country. Hmm. So we're, we're no BS here. I would tell you about what right. they were like as real people, all the stuff you don't know about them. George Washington's mother didn't like him. Washington didn't go to her funeral. Did you know that? I did Bowling? not. Did I that did not. I only Bowling? knew the, the wooden teeth thing. That's about all I know about Washington. Okay. You see? <laughs> and that's what this book is. So it'll be out September 10th. And uh, you can pre-order on BillOReilly.com. We don't charge you until you get the book. But get in line. Pre-orders are running 350% ahead of all of my other killing books, which, as you know, have sold 19 million copies. So this you, one's going to be... One of the best-selling authors of all time right there, folks. Bill O'Reilly, appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us.